Is it true that Diddy has to pay you two grand a day because he didn't ask permission to sample every breath you take? Yeah. Wow. For the rest of his life. <laughs> wow. Diddy has revealed that he is paying Sting $5,000 a day for his sampling and use of the police's song, Every Breath You Take, in Diddy's I'll Be Missing You. Now, the police's Every Breath You Take, obviously massive hit. I think this was yeah. 83. And then Diddy thereafter sampled, basically, it was just the straight instrumental, right? The entire Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, there was, I think there, there was some, you know, some, maybe some extra production and stuff like that. But, and, and there was, um, like, I think it was like 112 in, in Faith. I know Faith Evans sang on it. He didn't get a proper master use license. So, what we do, guys, in this situation is we're going to go, and if we want to sample, couple words a guitar riff anything that is in someone else's song they own it you have to go and get a license to use it in your song so if you just do it which you know we talk about like kanye right we talk about these producers who even at their level of success and notoriety and the fact that they've been sued for this stuff they still do it this was one of those situations where diddy was doing a lot this a lot in like the 90s where he just he just trade up taking sections of songs he's not getting away with anything he's taking a massive hit and he's releasing it uh you know obviously great interpolation interpretation Fantastic all the things song. that Diddy Every did song, yeah, both versions uh, and the original too. sting wasn't very happy about it so anyway this got revealed because charlemagne was interviewing sting and he's like hey you know didn't you have to pay and i think at the time he goes two thousand dollars a day for the sample now it was later revealed it's actually a little bit more than that did he uh, tweeted out that it was nope it was five thousand a day crazy amount of money i can't even like but they obviously they they they're cool with each other you know i even remember uh sting performing the song with them at the big i think it was like the mtv awards or something back in the day it's a little bit different with him because he was already massive at that point. And it's just kind of foolish the, the way that even happened because it wasn't like he was an independent artist that was just stealing something, just trying to get on, it, you know, like a mixtape situation that got away from him. He was already Diddy at that point. So, or uh, Puff Daddy at that point. So. They are in fact friends now. Yes. And guys, the way that I would look at this is to be happy about paying just shy of $2 million for a song, there's a cost benefit analysis here. So he is making that money up somewhere, right? So in not just streaming, right? Restreaming royalties, it's common for these huge songs to be making tens of thousands, if not more per month, right? So that probably offsets some costs. And then, you know, there might be some sinking opportunities as it's getting placement. So uh, he needs to be at least breaking even for him to be okay with this. <laughs> The main pieces of the song that Diddy sampled uh, for I'll Be Missing You is the guitar riff. And that riff came from the police's guitarist, Andy Summers. Mm -hmm. But since Sting is credited as the sole songwriter of the song, Andy doesn't get anything from Diddy. So all the money is going to Sting and the, his part isn't even the part that was sampled. Like as far as like the actual, like the guitar was sampled. So that's pretty crazy. And that in itself is just a lesson to all artists. Or when you're in a band and you're just kind of like, whatever, like you need to be thinking about yourselves and these kind of things too, as you're, you know, as you have rights to these songs and as you're giving away songwriting credits and stuff too. Um, so interesting, interesting. Yeah. So I'll, I'll end this with this word to you in the music business, you know, in the instance that let's say, uh, Diddy's going to be paying essentially almost $20 million <laughs> over the next decade alone. Number one, this is why it's good to negotiate up front because you probably are going to pay less if you just did it the right way. But then number two, if you are a co-writer and you're like, you know, oh my gosh, you're going to pay me $100,000. That's amazing. Okay, I don't need any back-end profit participation. Always try to get back-end points so that when the song's a success and it makes money for the rest of human history, you will make money too.